Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've talked about data elements and arguments and how they can describe the kinds of information flows that we may see in software. So flows that correspond to a stream of values or requests for behavior. But they have content as, as well. And so we need more information about the information. How do we do that? Let's go find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this intermediate episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, intermediate episode number four, how to describe data elements and arguments. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how data elements and arguments are, that are used at interfaces that are applied to ports on atomics are described using Autozar data types. This is part of a short sequence of episodes where we're taking a much deeper look at the Autozar Classic platform design methodology in covering both software and also communication design. Again, we are picking up from our previous episode, episode I3, how to describe a software port. If you haven't watched that, you may want to go and watch it before you continue with this episode. At the first and most intuitive level in the Autosar process, we can think about an application level perspective on information. And in this sense, what we're doing is we're taking a physical world view on information that's being used by software functions in and, and Autozar gives us a, a concept of an application data type or ADT for this purpose of describing this kind of physical world view. So in the case of fan control, we might want to think about a temperature that we are measuring to know how warm a, a space is and a user setting for how warm they want it to be. And of course, based on this, we're then going to control a fan to keep the user at the temperature they want to be at. So application data types allow the specification of units such as degrees Kelvin or degrees centigrade and constraints in relation to the data. So for example, we might have a minimum and maximum temperature that we expect our sensor to be able to measure. Similarly, we might constrain within limits the value that we allow the, the user to set because of performance capabilities of our, our system. And also we may only have a certain range of control of the speed of the fan that we would want to be able to express or make use of. Now we also have the ability with an application data type to, to have a category that expresses the kind of information it represents. So a value like a temperature or a string, so some text or something more complex like a curve and there are other types of ADT, other categories I should say of ADT possible. And of course when we think about software we have to think what we're going to be working with is numbers almost all the way down. And just as we can represent a number in many ways and see episode I1 if you want to know more about that, we can use numbers to represent any information such as quantities, text, concepts, levels, states, yeah, any information. And once we've got that information in the form of a number, of course, we can process it in software. And as software works with numbers, binary numbers in, in fact, we need to convert the physical view information that we have into a number that represents its present value. And we use a computation method or compu method for short to do this. And the examples we're showing here of a, a temperature becoming a number, a, a user setting becoming a number, or a fan speed corresponding to a number, this is physical to internal compu methods. It's also possible to have the reverse direction of internal to physical compu methods. Normally, we only need to specify one of these, apart from in the special case where you can't infer what the conversion is for the reverse direction, in which case you would spec specify both directions. Now, compu methods also have a category such as identical, which we would use if we were maybe counting objects and we want to use the, the same number in software as the number of things that we've counted, identical. 
linear, so how a voltage corresponds maybe to a, a temperature, uh, a text table, so uh, things like on and, and off states, or if we've got a multi-position switch, uh, a, a number that corresponds to the different switch positions that we've got, and, and other compu methods are also possible. To get really into software though, and we need to get from this kind of physical view of information to something we can really have in software. And, and in C source code, of course, we need to use a C data type and C is the language of Autozar Classic Platform. Autozar provides us the concept of an implementation data type to help us here. So implementation, we can think we're, we implement software, we're writing software, so implementation, that's the, the link there. IDTs describe how a piece of information is represented in software, and we'll link to a, a base type, and we'll come back to those in, in just a moment. But what we can do is, if we really know RC, we can consider that an IDT represents eventually a, a type def statement in C code. And the structure of the underlying C data type that we are want to use in our, our software is defined by the IDT category. So again, it could be a value, it could be an array, it could be a struct, a record, again, other categories are possible. So. We mentioned base types. What are base types? Well, here we see the type def statements that we just talked about. And we see there's a type def, and then there is a, a, a C data type being used to define another data type. So the data type we're defining the blue text here is the implementation data type. Our base type is the black text. So base types define really how a variable is going to be held in ECU memory when by the autos are basic software and RTE. And this means that when we're specifying base types, we'll think about aspects such as the number of bits that we need in memory, how they are to be encoded in memory. So is it one's complement, two's complement? Is there no encoding? Is it UTF-8 because we're working with the character and so on? And we also may think about memory alignment requirements. We're really close to real ECU memory when we're thinking about base types. Now, to get from the virtual function bus to source code is something else we need to think about. Because while a virtual function bus description would be complete with only the physical view of atomics that we get from ADTs, to get to real source code, we need to know the IDT that represents an ADT. And autos are therefore requires that if we use ADTs in our virtual function bus level description, then to get to real source code, we need to describe the relationship between ADTs and the corresponding IDT. And we use data type mappings to do this. And we will, in a, again, in the future, talk a bit more about getting to real source code. As a summary, in the Autozar Classic Platform methodology, we describe information with different views that correspond to really different levels of abstraction. Our most abstract and intuitive view is application data types that really give us a, a, a physical view of of, of things that we want to work with in software. At the next level though, we have the IDTs, which actually represent how that information will be in the software, how it will appear. And base types then provide a view that corresponds to how ECU memory will be used to hold information. Compu methods allow us to say how information should be converted to a number for use in the software and vice versa. And different categories on Compu methods allow different kinds of conversion to be specified. The C data type that is used in source code is defined by an IDT's category and referred base type. If you want to know more about ECU software design, then in future intermediate episodes, we're going to look at the role of the Autozar RTE in relation to virtual function bus and how information is sent over networks. Please, if you can't wait, then visit our website to find articles and webinars on the Autozar classic software and system design process in our digital engineering platform, Prevision and DaVinci Developer Classic. 
You can also, of course, make use of our free e-learning resources where you can find many more details. And if you really want to get a lot of details, then you'll also find information on our technical training where you can learn more about the different categories of data types and compute methods that we are not talking about in these videos. Do let us know though, if you'd like to know how to approach software and system design in the Autozar Adaptive platform. If you'd like to do that, or give us an idea for another topic, or you have questions on this or any other episode, please email us. Use our special email address, engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. Feel free, of course, or as always, leave a comment wherever you found this video. Again, I'd like to thank my colleagues, Mahmoud Ibrahim and Alex Ginnett for their help in preparing this episode. Don't forget to hit that bell to get notified when we release another one. My name's Ian Cunningham for Vector GB. We'll see you again soon. Bye.